Good evening, and welcome to GRE The News on this February the 17th, 2015, the only news source that incorporates defectionist words that must be learned for the Graduate Records Examination Standardized Test. If you didn't realize that defectionist is a word that I made up just now, then you need this more than anyone. I am Makarai Fifari with A Colorful Uterus. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg admitted to being drunk and dozing off during the State of the Union address last week. She was in party mode and feeling affable at the preceding dinner and was unable to resist some fine wine. She tried to aggrandize her tolerance for alcohol to Justice Kennedy before he immediately regretted falling for it. He reported trying to ameliorate the situation by holding her hair back as she vomited after stumbling upon Clarence Thomas's pubic hair collection. Justice Sotomayor softly calmed her down with her soothing voice and allayed her drunken stupor by giving her water and asking a slew of questions to keep her alert. Justice Scalia was able to deflect aspersions cast to him that he roofied Justice Ginsburg, but he reminded his fellow justices that he prefers to roofie another woman, and not the dying hope of principle of the Supreme Court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. After threats of arrangement with charges of attempted sexual misconduct, he stated that the animadversions against him were merely a confusion from when he told Chief Justice Roberts after she started to get drunk that he should get Ruthie, not a roofie. The justices then came to a 5-4 decision that the accusations were apocryphal. Justice Kagan then called her bartender at the gay bar, who promptly delivered an anal analeptic so that Justice Ginsburg could walk far enough to the congressional chamber to attend and not off to the President's State of the Union address. In other news, Wisconsin Republican Governor Scott Walker was in Great Britain this week, usually an anchorite, only leaving his antediluvian-minded echo chamber long enough to convince a skeptical electorate that he is indeed aware that there is a world outside the U.S. borders, he approached the British news media with undeterred aplomb. The first question he received was, are garbage dumps real, and are human beings causing them? Which he heard through a translator because he could not understand the British accent. He responded with an apatham that while successful in charming his usual audiences in Wisconsin, their attention spans attenuated by reductionist Koch brother funded radio commercials about who a true conservative is, the witty proverb was seen as an arrant confession of ignorance. When asked about his views on evolution, he apodictically stated that the music video was excellent but didn't care for Pearl Jam's work after their second album. While the press conference showed Europe that he amounts to being like an apollyon of reason, destroying evidence-based conclusions wherever they may lie, it allowed him to escape accusations of apostasy by the lobbyist religious leaders of the Church of Garbage Dumpism. Risking anathema by the multi-billion dollar Midwestern diocese would have defunded Governor Walker's campaign. When pressed further on the issue, upon his return at the U.S. at the Garbage Dump Denial Convention, he assuaged doubters of his credentials by reiterating that trash disappears from dumpsters, goes nowhere after that, and has no impact on the environment at all. Having been thoroughly convinced, it is unlikely that the Church of Garbage Dumpism will assay his conviction within the coming months. And meanwhile on Mars, scientists have been trying to make sense of a mysterious 200 kilometer tall plume of gas dust or unknown discoloration that rose from the Martian atmosphere. Amateur astronomers have been assiduous in their observations for years, which explains the discovery of the plumes in 2012. Damien Peach discovered the plumes and, thinking there was something wrong with his telescope, stared intensely at it before stopping to tend to his headache with an anodyne. Antonio Garcia Munoz of the European Space Agency tried to arrogate credit for discovering the plumes. As accolades poured in, it only annealed Mr. Peach Fuzz's resolve to lay claim to his discovery, and he won. That's all we have this evening on GRE The News on this February the 17th, 2015. Thank you for watching. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to pee like a racehorse.